All right, guys, we are up and running. So uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, <laughs> so where else are you going to be on a Tuesday night when we're all quarantined and um, some of right. us aren't off work yet but are heading home. But thanks for taking the time to um, jump in online with us and hanging out. So <clears throat> I want to tell you a little bit about how tonight's class came about and how Elaine and I kind of um, journey got to this part of our journey. You know, we've been dealing, we've been using oils for several years now. Well, six or seven. Six or seven At years seven. now. Seven, I think seven. And, um, and it just seems like this natural path that we go along where um, as we start making some changes in our everyday life and in our lifestyles, um, as people make this journey, it always ends up where they're making some changes to their diet and they're always making some changes to their, the way they clean or using cleaning products within their homes. <clears throat> so, um, as with the initial, um, essential oils introduction, we went, we had to go to three classes before we figured out, Hey, this is something we want to get involved with. Um, we went to two uh, cleaning classes. One was over at Sheila Anderson's house. I don't know if you remember Oh, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And um, that was actually the second one we went to. The first one we went to, we were like, okay, get it. Um, but not sure if we were there yet. Uh, we went to the second class and we came home and we literally raked out everything from underneath our cabinets and made the shift to cleaning with essential oils. Um, there's been a lot of trial and error with that. Mind you, when we started doing this, there wasn't the uh, resources that you guys have now, that we have now. Um, and uh, I'll share those with you uh, towards the end of the uh, end of this, uh, the slideshow. But um, there's a lot of things <clears throat> we found that work, some that don't work, some that we didn't prefer to use. So just remember going into this, this is a trial and error thing, just like when you're trying to figure out the oils for, for your own self, for your own body. Um, this is, you can tweak any of these recipes that we give you and, uh, you know, change it up to, to make it yours, so to speak. All right. Anything you want to add to that? <clears throat> okay. I, I would like to say the biggest tool you did not have available to you was you. Well, <laughs> thank you for that's, that. that's my biggest tool. <laughs> well, we appreciate that, Kay. And yeah, believe me, we you, started. Thank you, thank you. We we started at the bottom. Believe me, <laughs> we didn't know anything or what we were doing, and so. Yeah, I I don't know what I'd do without Angelo, and Elaine sure being of resources. Well, we appreciate you guys, and uh, and we know it. Um, we do we do this for for everybody you know to, it's, to learn yeah get out of my way here what? i gotta move you guys oh so now you're down along the bottom there <laughs> all right so um cleaning with essential oils it's uh it's you know for some uh cleaning is very cathartic not so much for me i feel it's always a chore um, there's moments where I feel like cleaning, um, but there's sometimes I just, I'm, I don't get into cleaning. Some people do. Okay. Um, whether we like it or not, we know for our own personal safety, for our own personal health, it's probably a good thing that we do some cleaning, right? So what we are used to having, what we're used to using, we're going to talk about some of those, um, some of those differences that we've encountered and some some recipes that have really worked for us uh, because with the natural cleansing properties that essential oils have they make it some pretty powerful some pretty powerful cleaners out there it's pretty cool <coughs> so why do we clean with essential oils right why should we clean um to give you a better idea uh of why essential oils are useful for cleaning, let's talk about some of the biggest benefits that they that we have from using the essential oils, right? One of the most appealing things we have with the oils is that for cleaning, 
they can become they come from a natural resource so we know they're they're effective we know they're going to be safe um and they're going to be safe around the entire family right around the, the the younger kids around the pets so that that's a good thing and when we use the oils for cleaning we're, we're relying on the the natural chemical comp compounds that are found within that oils to provide those cleaning those those cleansing and purifying power we know that the oils are extracts taken from the plant parts, which means they're highly concentrated and they are extremely potent as well, right? So they're so potent that we know we, we don't have to use a lot. A little goes a long way. Mm. Um, we are going to share some of the recommend, recommended do dosages, if you will, recommended amounts of oils to use, depending on what you're cleaning or, or the, you know, the, the, um, the surface that you're trying to clean. So let's talk about the versatility of them, all right? Uh, we, we know that even for our own health benefits that um, an oil has many different uses, right? And it's the same type of thing when it comes to using it, using the essential oils for cleaning, right? I want you guys to take a moment, think about right now, what do you have for cleaning products underneath the kitchen sink or in the bathroom sink or in the laundry room, right? Just think about those for a minute and think about how many different items you have, right? Um, we were kind of astounded <laughs> when we decided to make the shift and that was one thing we decided to do in one felt swoop. It wasn't um, a one thing at a time like we usually do with uh, when we're working with our health issues and stuff like that. We just, I mean, Elaine and I just emptied out the cabinets and we were amazed at the amount of things that we had. We had a garbage bag full of stuff. Well, not full, but a, with a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of stuff. And we replaced that with like four bottles of stuff. Um, so... I mean, so you got that same versatility here when it comes to using the essential oils. And perhaps one of the, one of the best things I like about it is the essential, when you're cleaning with essential oils, I'm not overcome by those uh, synthetic or those chemical smells, right? Toxic smells. Yeah, there's, they can be very toxic sometimes. So um, I got this very pleasant aroma that I'm, that I'm working with. And it's going to be lingering around the house a little bit longer too. So that's, that's always a good thing. So how does it work, right? What's some of the science behind it? What makes it useful for cleaning? Each oil has a really unique set of chemical compounds, which gives it very specific benefits, right? So you got some oils that contain chemical constituents that make up make the oil useful for improving the appearance of your skin, or another oil property is useful for repelling insect or supporting a really good restful night's sleep, right? An essential oil can have a combination of several different <coughs> chemical compounds, which is what gives the, the oil the unique diversity um, and gives us all those possible benefits from it. So there are a lot of oils that contain chemical properties that we know to provide cleansing, that we get cleansing benefits from. Uh, the essential oils with cleansing properties can be used, turn the page, as a natural cleansing agent, especially if they have like the high percentage of chemical constituents that are known for the benefits of cleansing. Now, I want to take a moment and kind of throw a little caveat out there. When we, when we talk about cleansing for cleaning with essential oils, right, there's, there's different cleansing properties within all of the essential oils, right? So for some, cleansing may be something that, um, I should just read it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> cleansing can have many different meanings, right? So some oils can have chemical compounds that will provide cleansing benefits for the skin. Others will have a chemical profile that makes it useful for internal cleansing. Uh, when it comes to household cleaning, the best essential oils are those that have the properties that are useful for 
um, cleaning the surfaces of their of their of your appliances and of of the house. So that's when we talk about cleansing for um, in this aspect. That's what we're we're focusing on. And as always, we um, there's always a, a I'd like to throw in a little bit of a safety guidelines that go with that. Um, even though that these are very safe and effective, um, that you can still you still want to kind of um, be mindful of where you keep the oils. Uh, if you do your uh, do-it-yourself type of uh, of a cleaning product, um, but we do know that these these will produce some real some of the best results. I already mentioned that a little bit goes a long way, and I'll probably mention this again later on. But when you are using it to clean a surface, you want to make sure that you do a kind of an indiscreet area first to make sure that um, it's not going to damage what you're trying to clean. Um, one of those things that Elaine pointed out to, was that the, this mentioned in here just very briefly is granite countertops. Uh, we do not have granite countertops, so I don't really know offhand of um, what would be a good cleanser for that, but there are some things that you want to stay away from when it comes to cleaning granite countertops. So you just have to be mindful of that. And again, when you're storing them, um, you know, we do take our current products and we keep them out of the reach of the children because we don't want to get them, we don't want them to, to mess with that stuff. And it's still the same thing, um, same way with, with these oils. If, if you're doing yourself stuff, you want to keep it, keep them up out of the way and so that nobody gets into them that doesn't, that you don't want to get into them. Although you probably could eat these. <laughs> <laughs> Some. <laughs> um, a little bit more about, um, a little bit goes a long way. You know, when they, when they test the oils, doTERRA has 54 tests that they do when they're um, ensuring that they have the highest quality product. And yeah, you can use a lower grade oil, but you're not gonna have the same chemical constituents in there. You're not gonna have the same uh, power that a pure oil will have. So you're gonna either have to use more of that oil or it may not actually clean as well as you want it to or as, way, as, as well as you hoped it would. So uh, that's another reason why we want to make sure that we use um, top of the line, high grade quality oils. And I didn't know it was actually this simple for um, cleaning your own home, but essentially these four products can pretty much cover the majority of your house as far as what you're trying to clean, right? Um, so whether you're trying to, um, make it, you know, DIY stuff, or you just want to kind of slowly transition, um, to out of some of those heavily chemi heavy chemical cleaners, um, these right here are going to be the ones that you use to, oh, thanks. I forgot about that. These right here are the ones that you're going to use that is going to replace most of what you're using to clean, right? Again, when you look at white vinegar, this has really, um, really good cleansing qualities. Um, it's useful for cleaning grease and mineral deposits. Uh, your baking soda. Baking soda is great for absorbing and helping eliminate some odor, odors, right? Remember sticking the old, uh, the box of uh, Arm & Hammer baking soda in the, in the, fridge. In the refrigerator, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah. And salt, I found this, a little fascinating, maybe a little bit too fascinating, but salt is basically just used uh, for as a scrubbing agent. Um, it, I mean, it's just that simple. And Castile soap is really, really good for, uh, it's, it's as a scrubbing agent and it can be used for cleaning stains and greasy messes. Just in case uh, you don't know what it is or what it looks like, that's it. It's uh, Dr. Bronner's. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, all I have is your video in front of me of your cleaning solutions. You don't have our camera anywhere? No. You're is not looking at Well, wait a minute. Yeah, I have it now. Okay. <laughs> I have some of that. Yeah. Okay. 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 I, use, I use it to make my foaming soap at the uh, sink. The hand soap? Yes, with the oils and stuff, yeah. Yeah, good, good. I also 
So down here, because the air conditions run so much, they recommend white vinegar. Uh, we have a little uh, by inside our air conditioned closet because that's where our air conditioning is. Uh, they have a pipe, and you're to pour that down once a month to clean it out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it cleans out that pipe that goes outside and does the dripping from the air condition. So down uh -huh. here, because it runs so often, we are told to put like white vinegar, maybe put a little bit of water in it if you want, and I pour it down once a month. Okay. To help that out. And that's to help with that mineral deposit, right? That's, yeah. um, so, and, so that's and the cool. Or whatever and down the the yes, Sean. Question for you. Uh -huh. So there's two grades of white vinegar. There is a less distilled white vinegar, which they call cleaning white vinegar. Mm -hmm. And then there's the cooking white vinegar, which most of us are most familiar with. And that's the more highly purified or filtered. Does it matter? I didn't know there were two types. Yeah. Well, uh, I online, because there's so many weeds down here and they come up like maybe where you're you have like stones laid around your lanai or whatever yeah uh, i ordered a 30 percent and that's yeah, i put that in a, a spray and you can spray it and your and your little weeds will just die will away. yeah yeah but the yeah. kind i put down my air conditioner <laughs> distilled white vinegar i yeah. don't know the white vinegar cleaning and cooking they're both five percent acetic acid Okay. Uh, but it's um, it, it winds up being the purity. What else is in it? The cleaning is really cheap because it's not as refined, but the cooking, because it's been filtered and removes all the other crap um, and it makes it food grade. So obviously you're, you're paying for that high um, filtering. Okay, I'll have to look into that and chase that rat a little bit because I, like Elaine, I wasn't even sure. I didn't even know there was two kinds. So um, we'll keep that in mind. Thanks, John. Well, and we'll get back to you on that. Sure. So uh, we talked earlier about how much how much oil do I use? Again, if you're using um, super high quality like DoTerra is, um, what you want to you can see the uh, the recommended amounts that you would use, but there's some things that you want to kind of consider when you're Putting your solutions together right um, it's like what am i trying to clean am i cleaning a rug am i cleaning a fabric uh, am i cleaning a countertop what is it that i'm trying to clean is this grease that's grinded in is this a spot um, those are the you know so you want to think about that as your um, when you're putting your um, cleaner cleaning product together uh, you could always start out with the lesser amount and then increase it as you see fit, uh, that'd probably be the better way to go uh, than try to build, make something that's too strong and then try to dilute it out until you, you get it right. So, um, but those are just the kind of suggested or recommended drops that you would use when you're, when you're putting a, um, a cleaning. Can you together. go back just one minute? I know, we're writing this all down. Sorry. <laughs> so I can save you a little bit of time I literally got this PowerPoint from doTERRA website. Oh, that's nice. So okay. um, I'm going to make all of this available afterwards as well. Now, one thing I did note is on the strongest, it says 20 drops plus, but it doesn't say how much um, cleaning solution. Yeah, that's what I'm going to ask. You. Right. And, and this is where you have to consider what are you making up? Are you making up two ounces of, of, a, of a product or are you making up eight ounces of it? Uh, <laughs> this is just stuff that you're just going to have to kind of um, have all those kind of considerations when you're, when you're putting it together, right? There's going to be times where I'm just going to use lemon straight out of the bottle. I've done uh, there's there's going to be other times where I'm, I'm going to want to use no more than 10 drops because it's in my window cleaner or something. So, well, Sherry? When, when you say cleaning solution, do you mean adding the, casti the, the Castile soap or no? Right, it's no different than making, when I, yeah, making your hand soap, your foaming okay. hand soap, which there's another, there's two, I have two recipes for that towards the end of Yeah, that. okay. So, yeah, whenever I say a DIY, it's, you know, it's whether it's yeah. a, a carpet cleaner, carpet freshener, linen spray, whatever. 
Okay, thank you. Okay. So these are just some of the oils that have um, really strong cleansing properties. Uh, you know, lemon and lime or any of the citrus oils really. And you notice some of the other ones that are in there. Um, you know, you got cinnamon and clove, uh, cassia, arborvitae. So there's some really woodsy type stuff too. Um, the thing that caught my eye on this is these are all the single oils, right? This isn't, this doesn't cover any of the um, doTERRA proprietary oils. Um, so, um, we know Melaleuca is really good for, for cleansing, uh, both internally and, uh, and cleaning around the house. So you've got a lot of variety when it comes to putting your, um, whatever you're, you're making together, right? I'm not a big fan of petty grain. I, I'm not a, I don't particularly like the smell. I don't dislike it, um, but it's not one of my, my favorites. But if, I'm, if it's an oil that has high cleaning properties, then I'm more apt to use that. So let's talk about some of these some of these oils um, as far as which are some of the better ones to use. Lemon oil by far is kind of the the powerhouse or the king of the cleaning oils, right? Um, it's really really useful in a lot of different ways, and it can it provides a lot of benefits from it as as well. And you'll definitely want to use lemon somewhere in the in where you do some cleaning of your house, right? Um, I'm sure some of your, your products at home already have some kind of lemon scent to it, um, but this is, a, this is a wonderful scent that you could easily add to, uh, to a, um, a DIY and, and get some really good benefits from it. Because not only is the oil refreshing, but it's got this really uplifting scent. And it has, like I said, it has some major cleansing properties to it. Another oil that we don't hear a lot about is Purify. And this is one of the more, uh, more powerful kind of proprietary blends, right? Uh, it's got lemon, it's got lime, it's got Siberian fir, uh, it's got melaleuca, it's got cilantro. And if you th think back at that last list, that was almost, the, that was a handful of oils that were on that last list. So this is, um, this is a really good oil that can be used um, it does have, in my mind, a little bit powerful of an aroma. Um, some people really, really like the, the smell of Purify. Um, but this is a really good odor, a, a really good oil to help with getting rid of odors that are in the air. Oh. Um, I used oh. to use it in and around our cat litter box when Chloe was alive. And um, that did help dissipate and it helped uh, kind of control those odors in that area. Citrus Bliss is another one that we don't hear a lot of. It's not pictured here, but Citrus Bliss is known for really uh, having a lot of cleansing properties as well. And when you look at the composition of that, it's got wild orange, lemon, grapefruit, mandarin, clementine, and, <coughs> excuse me, I mean, who doesn't like uh, the smell of, of citrus when, when you're cleaning, right? Because that is very uplifting as well. You know, all the citrus oils have very um, uplifting um, effects for your mood. So um, you could use Citrus Bliss. We use it actually in, um, in the bathroom. We have, um, we have one of the mistings bottles that uh, we keep. And uh, it's just water and Citrus Bliss. Sometimes it's just uh, wild orange. It's kind of whatever we want that smell to be. Uh, but this is great for kind of doing a quick spray in a room. Um, this is our this is our new Febreze, right? This is this really we don't we don't use um, anything. Febreze is all fake anyway. It's all synthetic. Can you get that so. bottle off of? Can you get order that bottle off of DoTerra site? Yes, you can. It's in the it's in the back. It's in under the accessories. I'll just talk to Lori about it. Yeah, I think right. Lori has a couple of them. So I have to get it from. Talk to um, her. I I really like those bottles. Um, they're, they're, they produce a fine mist and uh, it dissipates the oils really well and it kind of, uh, I think, I, I really like it. Um, of course, we can't leave this slide without talking about On Guard. So how many On Guard junkies do I have online with us right now? <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Um, for those that may not know, um, On Guard is, is a real powerhouse 
for uh, cleaning properties. Um, we really like the, the On Guard Concentrate, which is the bottle is right that there in one. the picture. Um, two tablespoons in a spray bottle, in an eight ounce spray bottle, it seems to last forever and it really, really works well. Um, <coughs> we use it for cleaning the entire kitchen. Um, anything from refrigerators to stovetops to countertops, the wiping down the toaster. Um, we use uh, lemon or wild orange to clean the sink out, but um, we find that um, On Guard as the general purpose spray cleaner uh, has replaced um, uh, we use it in, in the bathrooms all over, showers, tubs, uh, sinks, countertops there as well. Um, oh. So we don't have to worry about having yet another separate type of, of cleaning product. Um, we were at the commissary today and we were walking down the cleaning product aisle and I was just and looking at all the different products and I'm going, yep, yeah, we got our four bottles at home and, and we're good to go. However, Hello, when go ahead. When um, when you make up your your cleaning, um, <clears throat> excuse me, what what type of um, bottles do you put them in? Because you wouldn't want to have the oils in in plastic, regular plastic. Right. It has. It does have to be a, a specific type of plastic, um, and the numbers and letters elude me right now. But we have uh, just a glass spray bottle. Um, this is our on guard bottle. I literally just stuck a piece of tape on the outside and uh, I have one tablespoon on guard to eight ounces of water. So I okay. don't have to keep looking it up all the time. So this one works really well for that. <clears throat> and where did you get those, those bottles, the glass bottles? Um, you can get them from a couple different areas, Aroma Tools, um, Oil Life okay. has them. Um, you can even get them off Etsy uh, and a couple other um, essential oil sites that have them. Bless you. Bless you. Amazon has them <laughs> too. Um, shop around. Okay. Uh, they're yeah. not expensive. I think they're, the blue one was like a dollar, dollar and a half. Yeah, some from oh, wow. They're really good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like really, really cheap. It's uh, so. Glass. Two questions. <laughs> Two questions, Angelo. Yeah. First, um, do they need to be dark to prevent uh, oil degradation? Um, I do get dark. At, as a matter of fact, um, all of the two ounces and above are all either amber or blue or green or red. Um, I haven't found any of the clear. Now, you will find clear plastic ones. Right. Um, as long as the oils are not kept in direct sunlight, you're going to be fine. So if you keep these in the cupboard or, you know, underneath the bathroom sink, it's going to be fine. Okay. <laughs> Second question, distilled water or normal yeah. tap? Um, I'm going to say uh, that you'll always see that it's going to be recommended for distilled water because of um, it, it removes some of those properties of natural tap water. Um, but if I have something I'm going to use up quickly, like my on guard, because I, we use that so frequently. I just use tap water with that because I use it up quickly. Um, something else that's going to hang out for a while and not get a lot of use, um, like my window cleaner, um, where I use uh, vinegar and lemon. Uh, this, I'll, I mean, I, I will like to use distilled water because this is going to hang around a lot longer. I don't have to worry about mold or any kind of uh, bad stuff. <coughs> Thank you. Uh huh. So, um, who uses the On Guard foaming hand soap? Or do you make your own? Love it, love it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I, make, I make my own. I put some of that in with, with some other citrus blends for my hand soap. Uh-huh. I experiment, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and that's cool, and that's what you can do with this, right? That's, that's part of the versatility of it, is you get to experiment with it, and see what you like best. Now, one thing I have with the um, On Guard concentrate bottles is after about, I'm halfway through a bottle, it starts like leaking up and over the flip top cap. Really? Really. <laughs> Ours is just kind of junky, but I never really had a, a problem with. And it's not on the side that 
I pour from, it's the side, the side that you push down to pop it up and it uh, comes up and down the, the back there. You know what, uh, somebody taught me a trick a long time ago. Um, we're so used to peeling that safety seal all the way off. Yeah. Um, a lot of people now are just poking a hole through it um, so that the seal is still around the ring portion. Um, so only a little bit of the oil is coming out or a little bit of cleaners coming out and they maybe that won't um, will correct that. Okay, thank you. I do that with my fractionated coconut oil too, because I have a lot, I have that problem happen a lot with fractionated coconut oil. So I just make a small hole for it to, to come out and I have less mess. Okay. All right. Um, I already talked about the essential oil room spray that we, um, that, that misting bottle that we use. Um, that is, uh, is fantastic for just, you know, getting those odors out of the air. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any uh, teenagers around the house or um, rooms that just are kind of very stuffy and stale. Um, that this cleaner, this, that sprayer is, is fantastic for that. And <clears throat> on top of that, um, one of the other things I started doing was we replace our air filters in our house every couple of months. Yeah, sure. And you can put a couple of drops of oil on that filter. So when you get that, um, when that unit starts to work, you can, you can get a little bit of that smell. And again, it just kind of cleans the air in and around that. Um, my indoor unit is actually in a closet here. And um, so it's very tight and very confined area. So, um, you know, having a little bit of essential oil in that area is, is kind of helpful for just keeping that mustiness down. Mm -hmm. um, anybody in here like potpourri? Is there anybody that, that loves to, to have potpourri? Me. Yeah. Um, you know, this is, you could use the essential oils in the potpourri. You can still get the commercial potpourri. You know, you can get the stuff from, from Michael's or whatever, and then put your own oils in it and just kind of make your own <laughs> scent. Um, you know, some of the common ones, of course, are cinnamon or um, arborvitae, <clears throat> those, those kind of woodsy ones. But, um, you know, you can just stir that up every once in a while and kind of start getting that odor into the air again. Um, so that, that's the, you know, again, the versatility of and making the, the, the smell that you want. Mm. This is one of the recipes here for uh, just a general purpose spray. Um, Again, I don't use the vinegar when it comes to um, using the uh, um, OnGuard all-purpose cleaner. It's just one tablespoon and fill it up with water. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. And again, um, the, the water and vinegar one, we do have that as our window cleaner. Um, that works really great for shining up windows and mirrors and just those, those surfaces that you get a lot of uh, fingerprints showing up. Um, this actually, I sent, I feel that it actually cleans the windshield better than just Windex and paper towels. Um, okay. I, I see, I think it pulls a lot of the mineral, out of, a lot of the other gunk off the window and it makes it really, really um, kind of like crystal clear. <clears throat> and which oil was that for, for the window? The window is, um, I use, two and a half tablespoons of vinegar, and then 10 drops of lemon, and that is in an eight ounce bottle. Two and a half tablespoons of vinegar, you said? Yeah. No water with that? Yeah, top it off with water. Oh, top it, and how many oils? Um, 10 drops of lemon. Okay. I have a mirror in, in my bathroom. And they must have, when they were putting it in, they must have used something. At the very top, I have tried pure vinegar. I've, it's like a, I, it's like smears. It's like a, it's like when your car gets that mist inside. Mm -hmm. I cannot, I cannot get it off. I can, I've tried everything. I'd be curious to see what you, what happens if you use that. I'm going to try it. Thank you. All right, cool. The paper towel doesn't work. Try using newspaper. I tried, I've tried that. You tried it, it didn't work either. Yeah. Vinegar? I've tried. I, I can't tell you how many things. 
And I also have a Norwex window, and it's the one you wet uh -huh. that you should everything clean. That won't even touch it. As a matter of fact, after I try to wipe it, it like drags. There's something on it that they put on, very, probably like four inches down from the top. Almost it's sounds like a mastic. Oh, it, it, they yeah. put something on it, and I can't, I'm like, I don't, I even tried like, um, what do you call Goo Gone first? <laughs> I tried. I tried Goo Gone first, then I cleaned it with vinegar, then I tried the newspaper. I you tried alcohol. I did try alcohol. I, hmm. I mean, I was, yeah, she I, drinks I, it right before she cleans. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, well, there's another idea for you, Sherry. So you can um, try that and let us know how that works out. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> sure. The kitchen is another um, heavy hitter, right? There's there's uh, a lot of things just in and around our kitchen that um, can easily start to funk things up pretty quick. You know, you leave something in the refrigerator a little bit too long, gets buried, it turns into a science project, you're not too sure. Um, there's all sorts of refreshers that you can do too, whether it's um, refrigerator, dishwasher, even disposal. And what that is, is a little um, do-it-yourself recipes where you can get some baking soda and some oil and um, some silicone gels or some kind of mold that you can um, make basic little uh, discs or uh, biscuit or little pucks. Um, I did some for our sink to, to clean out the garbage disposal. Um, mm. It was baking soda and I can't remember what, what all was in it. Um, and I used uh, lemon and wild orange as the oils for that because I mean, every once in a while, I like to throw an orange rind or a lemon rind down to the garbage disposal just to kind of give it that nice fresh smell. Um, what I found out with these is you need to use them up quickly, not quickly, but um, quicker than a, than a one than in a month. Um, yeah. I found that uh, they held together, they held the shape um, pretty for a while, uh, but after a month and a half of being under the cabinet and me forgetting that they were there, um, they started to fall all apart. So I basically just started pouring a little bit down <laughs> as I was using the garbage disposal. Um, it still worked, uh, but um, you know the, the molds you can get are nice little kind of single, single use type things. <clears throat> Easy enough to make. Um, so, uh, I, I found those to be really effective for um, both dishwasher and the garbage disposal. What were you storing them in, Angelo? I just kept them in a Ziploc bag, and that was part of my other problem. Um, you know, I really didn't uh, keep them in a jar, um, or, you know, away from everything. I moved. I had them in a Ziploc bag, so they were constantly being moved around as well. Um, uh, yeah, so I wonder if you put them in something that's more sturdy, if that would help. It probably would, and more of a of an airtight seal would probably yeah. help too. So, um, stainless steel—that's a big thing, right? There's a lot of homes that have stainless steel appliances in and around them. Um, these you can get you can get some handprints on them really quick, and food yeah. smeared on it. Um, and it can look pretty. It can dirty up pretty quick, um, but you could spray this uh, spray a little um, undiluted white vinegar and a few drops of lemon. Um, and that can clean that that uh, that stainless steel surface really really quick. Oh. So we went out uh, recently and purchased another refrigerator, and they have out now what they call black stainless steel, yeah, and that really cuts down on the fingerprints as well. But it, it's still there. Angelo. Yes. Um, I did look up while you were chatting on what you can use to clean granite, and the DoTerra blog says that you can use on guard um the recipe is basically a half a cup of alcohol a cup and a half of water 15 drops of on guard a half a teaspoon of the castile soap and 16 ounces of and i mean in a 16 ounce glass container okay and then another website uh, combines basil and grapefruit okay again so whatever kind of smell you want to go for yeah. then okay, okay. Thanks for looking that up, Kay. You're welcome. Sure. I guess my only concern with the, the stones is they have natural porosity. So how often are you doing that? Um, are you going to develop a residual? Yeah. And, and that's the, uh, I, I, you know, 
I don't know. That's one of the problems they had initially with granite is because it, they're very poor still. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was they were actually damaging some of the, the um, some of the countertops from yeah. cleaning it with a with a very potent oil. So um, I would have to do some more research on that, chase that down a little bit. I know there's some oils uh, that are on the do not use list for granite countertops, um, but I offhand I don't know what they are. Uh, bathroom, like I talked about, um, we have, uh, you know, we use on guard spray for the, uh, for that. And the other thing we found is um, the recipe is at the end of this slide and I, I'll make it available to everybody is we make our own soft scrub. Now you can't really see this right now. It's basically baking powder or uh, um, baking uh. soda, water, Castile soap, and some, some drops of oils. And you notice that it's always separated, right? Because oil and water don't mix. So whenever you, whatever recipe that you end up putting together, just before you use it, give it a quick shake. Um, shake it all up, make it sure it's all uh, um, mixed up really well before you go ahead and use it. But this um, soft scrub recipe that we found, absolutely love it. It's great for bathrooms and showers, um, countertops, um, it's really, really well. It was hard for us to find a, a soft scrub um, recipe. It took us it took us a few tries, uh, but once we found one, um, it's a keeper. And um, I'll give it to you here. It's at the end, one of the last slides here. <clears throat> Is that what do you use in your toilet? Just the on guard oil with no. Soap? It's it's the soft scrub mix that we do. Um, <laughs> this. This with the Castile soap is really, really sudsy. So you use just a little bit of it. Right. Literally up and out probably. Uh, now our, our master bathroom has two sinks. So you know how you can picture how long that countertop is. And yes. I will use literally um, four quarter size drops of, of this, maybe five quarter size drops. And it does the entire sinks and countertop area um, without having to hose the area down because it gets, I used too much initially and I was rinsing and rinsing and rinsing because it just sudsed up and it cleaned it really well. I just used too much product. Um, and again, same thing in the bathroom and the toilet. I'll just pour some of that um, in the toilet and grab a sponge and um, swish it around real quick and, it, and it's good to go. Did you ever try that in a spray bottle like for your shower? Um, it's a little bit too thick for a spray bottle. Um, okay. So in the shower, I, I won't tell you the whole story, but I get crafty on, on I, doing I, the shower walls. I just basically throw it like paint, you know, and just splatter the walls and uh, <laughs> <laughs> wipe the walls down. Um, but it's pretty effective. Um, okay. And again, a little bit goes a long way. It does a really good job of cleaning. It. You know, every, I was just noticing a few days ago, um, there was, you get started to get that pink moldy stuff on the, on the floor of the, of the shower. Um, so I just got a toothbrush out. I, I poured some of that soft scrub on, let it set for about 10 minutes. Um, went to town with the, with the toothbrush and, and everything came up really good. So um, it's not like, uh, you know, sometimes you have to put a little bit of extra elbow grease in, but um, it's not like that all the time. So, when it comes to laundry, the, you know, there is an on-guard laundry detergent. Um, we found that um, we weren't too impressed with it. Um, I, sh I say we, but it's Elaine that does all the laundry. She won't teach me to do how to la any of the laundry, um, <laughs> which, which is probably a good thing. So <laughs> um, a lot, some people really like it. I know hunters, uh, hunters really like this because um, it didn't give any kind of odor to the clothes. Um, so um, they they really like it, but <clears throat> um, there is a recipe I will provide for you guys that uh, is a do-it-yourself dry powder laundry. Uh, the thing I wanted to point out to this is um, on that first bullet where it says add two to three drops of wild orange to the wool balls, um, that initially said dryer sheets, but dryer sheets are just like bad juju. You don't you don't need dryer sheets. I know. Um, Wool balls, wool dryer balls for the dryer work fantastic. And, you know, they say wild orange, but you can put whatever 
oil that you want on that. And um, Elaine was using, um, she, she trades off from different oils, but she'll put a few drops on each of the balls um, and it'll go for several cycles before she mm -hmm. has to put more oil on it. So Their sister made a couple for me one time. Did she? Yes, I love it. Yeah. Lori did. Um, she did this class before. Cool. It's, um, wool balls are, were, uh, a lot of people didn't really know what they were, um, but now that they've kind of hit the mainstream and, and people are using them more, um, people are finding that this is, they're pretty effective and they're liking it a lot more than the dryer sheets. Yeah, I like them. I've been using them. Cool. So you can even make up um, a cleaner or a, a polisher for, for your woods. Now, here's where I would really, really, really suggest that you find that discrete spot on that piece of furniture to try this, right? Because because uh, oil is good for the wood, it, you know, but um, you want to make sure that it's not too powerful of a cleaning product. When So you want to definitely do that in a small uh, kind of a secluded spot. And um, this can actually help really kind of rejuvenate the wood a little bit. We've had some commercial products that we used. You know, we have a couple of antique product pieces around here that um, that we have, and uh, we don't we don't have um, a wood cleaner um, made up on a regular basis. So I haven't really found one that I've liked yet. So again, I you know, um, all, not all of these are tried and true uh, recipes. So um, just kind of. You know, bear, think about that as as you put your cleaner together, um, and try it out. If you have any questions, we can we can answer them uh, before you know, before you want to mix something up. But uh, we have tried a couple of oven cleaners that um, really were not effective at all. <laughs> so we have yet to find a really good um, oven cleaner. As a matter of fact. I showed you what our glass cleaner was. This is just another example of one. Um, again, just spray it before you, or just shake it up before you spray it so you can get all the oils and, and everything mixed up really well. Um, because if it sits around for a little while. Um, and mine, and you know, this is for a 16 ounce bottle. Um, we do eight ounce bottles. We find those to be quite big enough for us for cleaning. Um, yeah. We make enough product and it lasts for a little while. We don't have to constantly refill it. We find we're making more soft scrub more than anything else because we're, we're using that more and more. So do you ever get that grease on your hand or that tree sap on your hand? And you, just, you, know, you can't find the soap to really get that off. Um, lemon oil works fantastic at getting that sticky, gooey stuff up. Anytime I have a sticker on something that I need to peel, I want to get that, that residual sticky mess off. Lemon oil has been fantastic. I'll just um, put the oil on the, on the cloth directly and rub it over that area. And it's, and it's fantastic. Um, maybe try that on the mirror first. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. I, um, I, uh, I teach CPR and some of my mannequins had um, permanent markers on them. I'm not sure how that happened, but um, I just used a little bit of lemon oil and it rubs it right off and it doesn't damage the, uh, the plastic from the mannequin or anything like that. So um, I, I use an on guard um, solution to clean my mannequins regularly, but uh, to, to get that, those, that extra, those markings and any kind of sticky stuff off lemon oil works fantastic for that. Mm. <clears throat> I was trying to remember of a product that I had that I used to use years ago. Um, it, and it was a carpet cleaner that you would shake it out onto the floor and you let it set for like an hour or so, and then you'd vacuum it up. Um, yeah. it was basically a, a baking soda type thing. Car Carpet fresh, they used to call it. I, okay, maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe I was trying was to make it too difficult. Foul. <laughs> but um, this this is a very simple recipe that you can use for for a carpet freshener. Um, you can get a mason jar and just punch some holes through it, like nail nail some holes in it um, mm -hmm. to use that to sprinkle it out. 
And same premise, you know, you're gonna sprinkle it out on the carpet, let it set for a little while, um, and then vacuum it up and you're good to go. And I think this is a much uh, better um, kind of a DIY thing rather than a commercial thing because the baking soda is just straight up. I mean, the, you know, baking soda is easy to come by um, and it's gonna absorb those order, o odors and you can make it smell whatever smell you want. If you want it to, you know, if you want to use lavender this time and next time you want to do something else, it's, it, you know, you can almost make it whatever you want. And uh, this has been, um, I've used this occasionally, probably not as often as we should, but um, this, is a, this is a very simple thing to make and very effective. I see they had uh, Purify there in the slide though. Yeah, um, again, you can use Purify if you want. Um, me personally, I'm not a big Purify fan. Uh, I, that's not the smell I want out in the living room when I'm, oh. when I'm out there. I'm looking for more of a citrusy or, yeah. or, uh, or an on guard type of thing. <clears throat> this is a um, really good spray for um, just freshening up the linens. Um, you know, you just got that. Uh, you got kind of a, just that, getting that musty odor. Um, you want to spray your sheets real quick or some furniture cushions. Uh, you just want to be careful with this that you don't want to put too much water right um, onto the surface of the, the cushion or something. Make sure it's dried before you, um, before you sit on it. But uh, you, you, whether you're just spraying it into the closet or onto your bed sheets directly or to a chair, um, we have some outdoor cushions um, that this would be fantastic for to, to kind of freshen them up a little bit. Um, this is much better than spraying that Febreze. This is something that you would be actually be able to put into the, the misting bottle as well because that's pretty much you know, rubbing alcohol and water. Um, that would come out of this bottle just fine. The misting bottle I find is better for if we really want to kind of dissipate it into the air. Um, if I'm looking to actually put it onto a surface or something, then you could go with this type of a bottle, this type of sprayer. Hey, I have to cut out because I have to get ready for work tomorrow. 4.30, 5 o'clock comes early. All right, Connie, yeah. we're just about done, but hey, thanks for joining us. Okay, it was I'll good contact seeing you. Worry about, I'll contact your sister too. Okay, do that. All right. All right, bye. See ya. Bye. Angelo, what percentage of rubbing alcohol, 70 or 95? Um, anything above 60 um, is going to be considered um, where it's um, sanitizing wise. Okay. Uh, the last thing I got for you is that is the is the hand soap. Um, mm. This is you know the uh, the on guard foaming hand soap is is very simple. I mean you literally just pour it out of the bottle into this and it's good to go. Um, if you want to make your own, this is really this is a really good uh, recipe for it. Um, personally, I thought this was too much Castile soap. I okay. <laughs> I I just thought I did, it didn't. Of course, Castile soap doesn't foam up the way pe people um, are used to soap foaming up. Um, Elaine found a, a recipe that we really really like, um, and that is three tablespoons of Castile soap. Three tablespoons? Three tablespoons. A half a, tables, half a tablespoon of fractionate, fractionated coconut oil. Mm. Half a tablespoon? Yep, just a half a, or no, one tablespoon, sorry. What, what's, so what's three table, the... Three tablespoons of Castile, one yeah. tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil. Oh, one, okay. And then 10 to 20 drops of oil, really, to, you know, you can, you can pick and choose on that. And then top that off with water. And how big of a container is that in? That is a, um, the container about this size. I think it's like a four ounce size. Yeah, I'm trying to look. I don't know what size that is. Um, uh. You can pick up the uh, the foaming hand soap containers off of Aroma Tools. Um, I know they have them there. The 
I know I was cheating, but the uh, Bath and Body Work bottles, the, the foam ones, yeah, they're they're eight and point seven five ounces. Okay, so they're about eight ounces. Yeah, okay. so okay. I'm late. I'm late using the. <laughs> the only thing you have to remember is um, when you're filling it up, right? And uh, don't go to the top because because you got that big yeah piece on top that aerates it, and to, um, you I gotta leave the, room for that. I did it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> learn by your mistakes yeah you know um so so those are um uh, some of the recipes that you can you can make up and use around the house um elaine and i have just found this to be very effective um it's actually more cost effective and it cleans really really well so um again we just one felt swoop changed everything over um, and we, we just have a lot of really good results from it. So um, since we've started using these oils um, mm -hmm. and having to search and hunt for different recipes, uh, I now have, doTERRA now has a handful of things right on their website. Um, not only do they have uh, a sheet, they, they call it the, um, uh, there's a whole a whole kit of do-it-yourself type stuff. Um, I'll upload that file on into the Facebook group. Um, there's also a cleaning ebook that you can that they have a ton of ebooks now. If you haven't looked at the resources, um, if uh, that's a, it's really good information to go back there and they've they really kind of put together some really very simple uh, but concise uh, ebooks. And I mean, they're there for free. Just download them and and use them. So um, I will upload the ebook. I'll upload the other uh, stuff. And then there's, if you want to download this PowerPoint presentation from the back office, um, okay. it it has um, a bunch of different blog sites listed that you can go to check stuff out too. So the resources are there. If there's something that you want to try and not too sure, give us a shout, and we'll 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 walk you through it kind of so okay all right thank, thank you very informative sure i i hope it was um <clears throat> this is a this is a class we always seem to come do about every um 18 months it seems that uh, it kind of comes around and that's um it's just where people are in their journey uh, you know it's when some people we weren't ready at first to uh, we were still trying to learn the essential oils for ourselves, let alone cleaning products and, and all this other stuff. Um, so uh, we always keep this kind of in our back pocket. We've been doing it since uh, 2015 was the first time we taught it. So it was 2014 when we decided to make the jump. So I guess we've, we've been doing it for a while now. Okay. Thank so, you for all the great information. Yeah. You guys yeah. have any other questions for me? Okay. No. You said no. at the end you were going to give us one more. The the spray bottle. Yeah, yeah. that was the, the hand soap. Hmm. I thought it was the purple spray bottle. It was I think the bathroom soft scrub. No, we. I got that. But he he told us that. No. Huh? No. It's... Oh, he didn't tell us exactly. He, he told us what he put in it, but not the actual amount. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Which one was that? What were they the supposed to Soft scrub. Soft scrub. Soft scrub for the bathroom. You, you gave us the ingredients, but not the amount that you used. I think it was a sink with a purple bottle. And I can't find it right now, so I'm going to have to go chase that down. Well, let me ask you why you're chasing it down or thinking about it. <laughs> I'll post uh, it later. The spray, uh, refreshing. Uh, is that the same one for the purple sprayer? 
you, you said distilled water, alcohol, and then whatever drops of oil we want. Is that the same as that in a purple sprayer? That's yeah, there? the purple sprayer, I just have citrus bliss and water in that because we go through that pretty quickly. Oh, so the citrus, okay. So it's water and yeah. just then oil, okay. I will have to post the soft scrub one because I thought I had it here, but it is now gone. Yeah. It's eluding me. That's all right. Uh, the um, bathroom spray that Jen used last year at the training also has alcohol. She puts alcohol, because I've made it quite a few times, she puts some um, sandalwood in hers. Um, Is that the purple bottle? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, that's what I put it in. And just p so people know that mister doesn't miss like any. Do you have those, Sherry? I have, but I haven't used them yet. Yeah, they don't spray like any other spray bottle. First of all, you know, I always shake them because whenever you use anything like that, you should shake them. But when, it, when you pull the handle back, it like, it's not just like, yeah. So yeah. Rather than pump it a few times, it's best to just kind of like spray it once and see if you have enough. So with the water and the oil. Let me to get the recipe. I'll get it for you. Yes. Hold on. Any other questions while we're waiting? Because I suddenly lost the soft scrub recipe, so I will um, email that and post it out okay. to you folks. Yeah, you did give us the ingredients, but not how much of everything. I mean, we could we can experiment, I guess. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll get you those numbers because um, I would have sworn I wrote it down here. He's perfected the blend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have not because it's usually Elaine that makes it, and uh, go girl. <laughs> she's she's, good, she's good at that you. stuff. She didn't give it to you. <laughs> she has it written down in a drawer, so um, she ever has to go to it for a quick reference. But she 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 usually has it right off the top of her head. And That's I, okay. I thought I scribbled it down here somewhere. There it is. You is that the basil, that? sandalwood, and green mandarin? Oh my goodness! What? Oh, this is. Oh, is that? Uh, hey, hey, um, hey! It? Can you take a picture of that and just yeah. text it to me, and then I'll I'll get it out to everybody. Okay. There's too many ingredients. You say she puts. Well, it's, two, it's two separate things. One is the basil and lemongrass, and the other one is the sandalwood and the green mandarin. Well, I don't care about the oils. I just want to know what the other mixtures are. Because it's I which bait. hazel? I'm sorry, it's not alcohol. It's witch hazel, and you just oh. put a tiny bit of um, the foaming hand soap. Oh, it has, it? and then it says on guard. So I just put a few drops of that plus the other. Well, why would you put that in the purple if it's for scent? If you're going to put Castile soap in it, because that's what Jen Fry said to do, and whatever <laughs> Jen Fry says to do, and we and we trust Jen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, why, I, I want to grow up to be just like Jen Fry. <laughs> I want to grow up and be like a lot of people. <laughs> well, I think try the water and oils first. Maybe a little bit. Of, I don't want to put Castile soap in it because I'm not cleaning. I'm just spraying it. Uh, that's me. It didn't say Castile. No, it says foaming hand soap. So because I have on guard foaming hand soap, that's what but, I do. I see. I don't. Yeah. Okay, just and take a snapshot that of it. Or and, the uh, on guard concentrate. So you do one or the other. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Any other questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. It's trial and error, guys. It really is. You got um if you're looking for a recipe, give me a shout. I'll I'll see what I can find. Um yep. this but, was helpful. Yeah, I mean just put put something together. If you don't like it, tweak it up a little bit or change it up a lot you know this i do have a question for you so sure. those um um ebooks yes since i'm not a wellness advocate 
are they in the back office or are they where they are there when you log in you should see resources up on the top okay um check that and sure. if you can't find it let me know i will download any ebook and, um or let you know what the list of ebooks are okay um it's they started with a half a dozen and i think now they have over 20 of them wow okay <clears throat> thank you or when you log in you can just search ebooks and see what that brings up Okay. Thank you, Angelo. Yes, you guys thank are you. welcome. Thank you. Elaine. Thank you. <laughs> okay. See you. We'll see uh, you guys bye. later on. Uh, All right. Hey, Have a good night, guys. Yeah.